Hi everybody, I'm Vanessa of Vanessa Jones Voices, and this channel is all about asking questions and finding answers. Sometimes I'll ask questions about a product or a service, and then I'll discover the answer as I use that product or service. Today, I'm going to ask a question about voiceover itself. Today's question is, how can you tell the difference between the sound of a professional voice artist, just the sound itself, versus the sound of somebody who's doing a voiceover but isn't a professional voice artist. I'm not talking about the voice itself. I'm not talking about what you can do with the voice, the emotions you can create and all of that. I'm just talking about the quality of the sound itself. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a journey to show you what a professional voice artist has to do to create the sound quality that allows you to hear exactly what you need to hear without anything else, without anything distracting you from that sound. And that has to do with how we absorb sound waves. And you just want to kill the sound waves as they're bouncing off of everything, the walls, the mirrors, the glass, all of it. Just kill the sound waves and get them to stop reverbing off of everything. I'm sorry, that was violent. I should have warned you. Please take this opportunity to stare at a soft teddy bear and calm your central nervous system. <sighs> and why am I standing in front of my closet? Many voice actors begin their professional careers in their closets because a closet is a fabulous place to absorb sound. All the clothes in the closet help to keep the sound waves from reverberating. And so everything gets dampened. And as the sound gets dampened, then the voice really becomes clearer and not muddied by all the echoes of the sounds around it. So when you're inside your closet, you have a better sound. However, it's not particularly comfortable. So eventually, as voice artists begin to make a little money in their careers, they invest in bigger spaces and more comfortable spaces. So when you don't have clothes to dampen the sound, well then what do you use next? That's where acoustic panels come into play. And I made all of my own acoustic panels and put very specialized acoustic absorption material in them. I'm going to show you some pictures now of the panels as I was working on them. I constructed my panels out of pine boards that I cut to be a little over two feet by three feet for four of the panels and around two feet by four feet for the other four panels. Most of them are three and a half inches deep. With the exception of the one directly behind my booth and the one across from my desk, which are both five and a half inches deep. Most acoustic panels are filled with rock wool insulation, and that works great, but it's also dangerous to work with. You don't want to breathe that stuff, and I didn't feel like having to suit up with a respirator. So I chose to fill my panels with a combination of acoustic grade recycled denim insulation, acoustic cellulose, otherwise known as recycled paper, but very densely concentrated, and cork. The idea was to utilize a variety of acoustic insulation materials because each one absorbs slightly different wavelengths of sound. After building each wooden box, I laid one or two pieces of acoustic batting inside. Here's what the recycled denim looks like up close. This part will end up being the back of the panel that faces the wall. Here are the cork sheets that I bought on Facebook Marketplace and then glued together with wood glue to create a thicker, more sound absorbent filler for some of the panels. Finally, I covered each panel with an open weave fabric that would allow the sound waves to penetrate into the panels and then dissipate. In order for you to be able to hear how well the panels work in my studio, you'll first need to hear what happens when sound waves reflect off of high ceilings, bare floors, appliances, and other hard surfaces. This is how things sound in the kitchen. And you can hear all the echo as I'm cooking. It's the kitchen for you. And here in the workout room slash workshop, 
it's basically just a room off of the garage and it is underground and um, there's a lot of metal. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that sound waves can bounce off of. The bathroom is never a good place to do voiceover. There's way too much echo in a bathroom. It is the worst place ever to think about doing a good voiceover. You have all these echoey spaces, bare walls, porcelain toilet, uh, granite countertops, showers, which trap sound, and then the sound waves just bounce around. Glass, it's just, it's terrible. <sighs> this room is the one that is full of acoustic panels. This room is the one where I have spent thousands of dollars to deaden the sound. So the sound waves, instead of bouncing off of everything they encounter, they simply dissipate. They go away. It comes out, it hits something soft, and gets absorbed and dies. And that is why this room is such a meditative room. You walk into this space from the hallway, from the living room, from the kitchen, from all the places where I've taken you on a journey, and you just feel the sound stop. It's such a wonderful calming sensation for the nervous system, and it's so much less distracting. It's amazing how used to reverb we get in our regular lives. We don't even realize how it ruffles us until we walk into a space where the sound stops. And it's such a nice sensation of calm. I'll show you my acoustic panels that I have hanging around the room. Here is my green panel covered in burlap. Here are my other panels covered in other acoustic material. This is my curtained booth space, which I'll show you in a minute. And here are the rest of my panels. That is a large wool rug with a flannel sheet on top that's crammed into the corner as a base trap. And here are the rest of my panels. And here is my chair where I sit to do my recordings or I stand. And around me are these curtains which I open up when I'm not recording. And then I put around, I surround my desk with them. I unhook them and I surround my desk with these curtains. And when I do that, it makes the sound just that much more intimate. So this is what my booth looks like from the outside when my princess curtains, as I like to call them, are spread out around my desk. A shout out to my mom for making these tremendously wide and long curtains. Notice I've also hung smaller acoustic panels above my head. Never ignore the ceiling when it comes to potentially reflecting those sound waves. Here's a nice wide shot of my main setup. Even my standing desk converter is covered in cork. Once I close them and I'm in my little cocoon, I have a large acoustic panel behind me. I have the curtains on all sides. I have my microphone and I'm in this little cocoon here. And with just the curtains around my desk, around me, it tamps down the sound that much more. It takes the little bit of reverb that's left and it deadens that as well. So now I have this space which is enclosed but not claustrophobic. I'm not in a closet. I'm not in a tiny little sound whisper room booth. I still have a window right on the other side of my curtain. As soon as I open my curtain, I have the window to look out and I can do my editing. And I have a really nice sound. You notice the difference between this sound and this sound out here? I mean, it's night and day. 
all the echo that I'm hearing from the high ceilings and the big open space is gone when I get back into my studio. This is the sound you want when you're doing voiceover. You want nothing to distract from the emotion and the voice and the images that are on the video. You don't need a bunch of sound waves reverbing everywhere. That just takes away from what you have created. So it takes a lot to isolate the sound waves and find a way to absorb them. But it's worth it because it's so much calmer once you have those things in place.